Hello lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. Uh, wow, I suddenly feel really warm, but our weather has changed. So last time I saw you, a couple of days ago, our daytime temperatures had been hovering around 24 to 28, <laughs> on some days getting as high as 30 and a little bit more, and we've suddenly dropped to 13 or 14. Bonkers. I popped out early this morning and really early and it was definitely chilly. It was time to put a vest on and put a cardigan on. Having got to the plot now, um, it's just before noon. Literally all I've just done is catch up with some watering. It's made me all hot and sweaty again. So, why did I catch up with watering? Well, because yesterday we were promised rain all day. I knew it wouldn't happen. <laughs> uh, we had a bit of a shower at about four o'clock, but to call it rain, well, that's a bit of a misnomer. It was more like, it was more like a mist. As soon as it was landing, it was evaporating. But I was hoping that it was enough, just enough, to keep things alive to save me a trip down here yesterday because I really, really, really didn't fancy it. I was so tired. So I didn't come. I've come back today and it's like, ooh, things were really floppy. Anyway, I've given the things in pots a good watering and it's, it sort of shows more than ever how important it is you know, as soon as the plants are ready, get them in the ground where they can be got in the ground. Uh, because at least in the ground, they've got a chance of finding some moisture in the little pots. It just evaporates so quickly. So, I'm going to be planting my squash today. As a bare minimum. I don't know what else I'll get up to, but yeah, at the very least, squash. So I'm going to be doing some vertical and some horizontal. I've just gone through all my squash, sorted them out, sorted where, where I want things for vertical, where I want them for horizontal, what have you. And yes, of course, I've lost about four to slug and snail damage already. It happens every year. Um, this year I sowed, I'm trying to remember now, I think it was 27 squash. I sowed, I started at home in the middle of March. Of those 27, 14 germinated, so it's just about half. Two of them didn't look very good, so I'm going to say 12. Surely I've got more than that. 3, 6, 9, 12. No, I've got about six. Oh, no, I've got my numbers wrong. I think I sewed 40, 4, 0, and got 27. That sounds more right. Anyway. Look, the long and the short is, I don't have as many plants as I hoped for. They're not quite as robust as I hoped for. They've been a bit damaged. They've actually been out for over a week now. So, started them at home, in my front window, nice and warm and bright. Then they go to my hallway, which is still bright, but less warm. Then they come to the garden and go in the cold frame, but the cold frame is mostly open because we've been so hot. And now they've been in the garden, but sitting in their tr in their pots, in little gravel trays for, I think it's probably over a week now. So they're well acclimatised. However, <laughs> I've just looked at the forecast and we are forecast in a couple of days, um, a night time temperature of just seven degrees. We've been in double figures at night for Oh, weeks since the beginning of May when we had that um, week of frost at the beginning of May but since then we've been in double digits so I'm gonna get everything planted today I'm gonna to keep an eye on that forecast and if tomorrow it's still calling for a night that's below eight or so I may come back and cloche all my plants with my water bottle cloches just for a bit of protection and I need to put our down slug traps because <clears throat> I think that's what happened yesterday with that little bit of drizzle. I think it was just enough to bring the slugs and the snails out and that's when I've had the attacks. 
never mind right so that's what i'm going to get up to today i'm going to talk about that remember i mentioned at the end of the last video i'm going to try something a bit different it's the only marginal change i'll tell you about that when we get out there to plant that's to remind me of that that's my list of jobs to do today ah so before we go out a couple of thank yous um this one is from iris thank you oh bye bye poppy oh <laughs> got more room to spread out now i was all scrunched up because i didn't want to sit on her tail a uh, lovely card of hamburg from iris thank you so much and iris sent me some um what's it called now ibuprofen gel to rub on my old knees thank you lovely i should be trying that tonight after a gardening session oh lovely and then this oh, i love this card you see an absolute plethora of multicoloured kitties from Sheila. Thank you Sheila and for the note inside a thank you lovely. Brilliant. Oh, right where <laughs> I'm gonna to have to remove something and <laughs> anyway I shall do that later. Um, now just before we go outside very quickly it came up after the last but one video. Excuse me a second. Just because it's overcast and the temperature's dropped a bit doesn't mean we need to stop drinking our water. Yeah, um, it came up after the last video. It's come up a couple of times actually, but I'm just going to sort of explain things now. So, uh, in any year, some plot holders give up their plots for whatever reasons. Quite often, they're moving away from that area, um, so they can't get to the plot anymore, or you know they, they they have a baby and suddenly find that they just don't have time to be in the garden anymore it's fine you know there are numerous reasons why people give up their plots uh in the last sort of couple of years or so we haven't had any incidents where we've had to kick someone off for not looking after their plot um we've had some great oh excuse me we've had some great newbies start in the last couple of years in the last year in particular really quite astonishing folk who've had their plots now for less than a year they've taken on plots which were completely overgrown i'll give you a catch up with an m m and m's plot one of these days but yeah taken on really gnarly plots and Basically, their plots are in full production already. Their plots are in a better state than mine. So well done to all of those newbies. So now, when plots, when someone decides to leave, because we're a self-managed site, so we're owned by the council, but we self-manage. So when someone leaves our site, we get in touch with the council to say we've got a plot that's come up available. The council then go to the waiting list and find the first name on the waiting list, put them in touch with us. They come and have a viewing and if they think, yeah, I'm still interested, I'd like to take it on, they get the plot. Yay! Uh, so at the moment, during, so there's two things I want to explain today. During this um, whole COVID thing, we're not actually having anyone come on site other than the current plot holders. We're not even allowing friends on site. So quite often, especially when we get into this lovely time of year when the weather's lovely, quite often I'll invite a friend over for the afternoon. I'll work all morning, have a friend over. We sit outside the shed and just kick back a bit, usually with a beer. <laughs> um, you know, other people, they have their friends over and they get them to give them a hand with digging or whatever. That's, I know some of you have suggested that. But at the moment, we are having no one on this site except the plot holders who are current plot holders. Um, so that means that where we've got a couple of plots that have been given up within this, our year starts on the 1st of April. Where we've had people give up their plots, they aren't being re-let at the moment because we're not having strangers come in to show them around. So the plot immediately next to me, um, that used to be belong to Svetlana, a couple of people saying, oh, why didn't you take it on, Vivi? So, well, two reasons. No, it's one reason, really. We're all only allowed one 
half plot. That's what I have. It's a half plot. It's five rods, a little over 100 square metres. That's all anyone's allowed. And I completely agree with that. So much as I would love a second plot, especially if it was Svets, because it's just there, uh, I'd love a second plot just for fruit. Um, it simply wouldn't be fair because there are more, way more people wanting allotment gardens than there are allotment gardens to give to them. So, it, you know, whoop -la, like I say, it would not be fair. There are people out there who live, like me, in a flat with no outdoor space whatsoever, desperate desperate for a bit of soil to play with so yeah i completely agree with our committee's blanket decision on that uh, it's our committee and the borough borough decision one person one plot or one family one plot so uh i'm not going to get an extra plot just because suddenly we've got these spare plots but what we are going to do until we can let them until we can get new people here it's lovely um we're just going to try and maintain them as best we can we're not necessarily going to cultivate them uh just because i think we're all on this side i think we're all exhausted at the moment excuse me <coughs> as a bare minimum we will try and keep grass cut that's as a bare minimum although having said that the grass isn't really Growing. Am I in your way, puppy? <laughs> She's flicking her tail at me. The grass isn't growing much because um, because of this drought we're having. So yes, I hope that's answered the question. No, I'm not going to be taking on a spare plot this year. Um, I mean, actually, I wouldn't manage it anyway at the moment. But also, I wouldn't be getting a second plot at any time in the future. Ever, ever, ever. So, there we go. Right, well, let's stop faffing around in here and let's go and plant some gorgeous squash. Well, some of them are gorgeous. Some of them are looking a bit raggedy and nibbled. Oh, here comes a gust already. <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those days. Um, I was just redoing my maths in the shed having said 27 and 14. And I immediately thought, nah, that's wrong. Oh, this wind is going to be annoying, isn't it? I mean, it's nice and cooling, but... Oh, well, we'll just carry on. So, it was 40. It was definitely 40 that I sowed. 27 germinated. Not a single tomachino. And I think only one delicata. Or was it two? Not bothering with delicata again. That always... Yes, windy day. Yeah, the delicata always stubborn when it comes to germination I haven't got the time and the energy to be cosseting these plants that don't want to do it so <clears throat> I ended up with 27 I've now got 21 <laughs> because for instance this happens um, just here on the stem it's had a nibble right into the stem the thing that's annoying with the squash family and the slug snails is you know, when, if they nibble, say, one of my beans that's coming up and they nibble a leaf off, there's still a leaf, the, chance are, the chances are the plant can survive. But with squash, for some reason, they don't go for the leaves, they go for the stem. And they usually go quite near where it's just coming up the soil, have one little bite out of it, and it's enough to wreck your, uh, your plant. So, um, yes, I'm... I'm I feel skimpy on the squash this year with just 21 plants it, and it just goes to show um, that need we always need to over sow, always sow more than you think you need. And look if they all survive great you've got lovely gifts to give away and if they don't all survive hopefully enough survive to give you a harvest. So I have got for this corner I'm growing Jack B. Little. There are some Sarah Raven seeds. I haven't used them before. They were gifted to me. Let's see how they do. I've got some Wolf and Butternut on the end there. I'll talk about those in a second. 
I've got a yellow scallop, which I think is actually a summer variety, and a couple of miserable delicata, which I'll plant with some loofah too. Then in the third bed, I've got my cream of the crop, which I tried to grow up last year, but it wanted to be a clump, so I'm growing it on the horizontal. Wow, it's suddenly baking hot, but I can see really big black clouds. Right, without further ado, let's get on. Shut up, baby, get on. Okay, squash need three things. Space, food, water. Space-wise, ideally, a square metre per plant. I'm being really greedy with the vertical ones. They're barely getting half a square metre each. Uh, in the horizontal beds, they will get about a square metre each. If you are lacking space and you want to bung a couple more in somewhere else, think about using your compost heap. If you've got a compost heap that's a fallow, as it were, that you're not going to be using till, say, the autumn, and it's quite full, take the lid off, whatever you've got there, bung a couple of your plants in the compost heap. They've got a bit of space, but also, in terms of food, they're going to love it. So. In terms of food, a, you know, a well manured bed is best. So for mine, <clears throat> this bed has had chicken poo added already. But what I'll do with all of them, oh, bringing it over, they're all going to get a really, really good load of compost added. So my clay is quite nutritious anyway, but they'll have all this compost added. And where have I got them? Oh, the chicken poo here, and a handful of chicken poo for each planting station, too. So, space, a bit naughty in the vertical bed. What that means is um, they're going to be more greedy for feed and more greedy for water. So, I'll keep on top of both of those things through the summer. <coughs> um, in terms of watering, got them all ready much as I showed you with my cucumbers in their little pots each squash gets a bottle sunk next to it right into the soil like this so that the the spout is almost under the plant so we're getting the water direct down to those roots because they don't like their stems getting wet one two they're really greedy for water we need to keep you know topping this up when you're putting your bottles in, I tend to put mine in at a bit of an angle. Just think about where you'll be watering from. So I'll be watering from this path. So instead of pointing the bottle towards the teepee, wouldn't be able to get in, point ever so slightly, <coughs> excuse me, towards the path at an angle so I can just shoot my water in there. Let's get that bottle popped in first. Now, there was something else really important that I wanted to say, and my mind obviously has gone blank, as it is wont to do these days. Oh yes, 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 I know. It's the little tricky thing I was talking about the other day. So, oh, it was months ago, I think it was in... I think it was in like an online forum I saw it. Someone said, so any of you who've grown, well, whether it's vertical or horizontal, you know you have that thing where the plants end up, they want to come onto your path, and you're like, no, I want you in the bed. Get off the path and into the bed. And you try and sort of turn them around and train them and, you know, get them going. Oh, I'm getting this compost everywhere get them going to where you towards where you want them. I read that the plant will grow, its leading stem will come in the opposite direction to its first true leaf. So well on this one this is the Jack B Little. The first true leaf has had a nibble or oh, that might have been a bashing in my bag from when I was bringing it down here. So if this was the first true leaf coming this way, in theory, it should want to grow that way, if this theory is correct. So, I'm going to give it a try. 
I'm going to aim it slightly towards the TP. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to this is one of the reasons, someone, again, someone was asking about why don't I just put the compost on all the beds. <clears throat> I'm aiming to give each plant at least a third of one of these bags that's got 27 litres in each bag, so about 9 litres of compost each, which is so generous. It's more generous than I've ever been before. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it'll give them all, A, a good start, and B, <laughs> a good finish. Okay, this one, these aren't quite big enough yet for me to tie them into the teepee. They do need a bit of help. So again, like with everything else where I do tying, I'll anchor the string to the teepee, good tight knot, and then a slightly slacker, more gentle knot around the actual veg as it's growing. They'll, as they grow, they will put out tendrils and they'll use those to grab, so, all of these bits of wood they're lovely they're they're pretty weathered by now but they're kind of rough there's bits of bark knobbly bits sticking out so there's perfect little points for the plants to anchor themselves to but i will keep an eye on them and i will keep tying them in as the season goes just to encourage and help them meow <laughs> oh rusty okay so there's nothing for it now but to get on and do. So I will get this lot done. I'm gonna have a quick word about the Walthams in a second. Um, yeah, well, let's just get planting. Get planting, yay! <laughs> oh, happy day. Even though it's a pretty dark, moody day. Shut up, Vivi, plant. Okay, so I'm putting my Waltham butternuts against, oh, <laughs> little weeds as I go, against this teepee. Now, um, I've never grown Waltham vertically before, <clears throat> so this is a bit of an experiment. The majority of them, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, seven, I hope, at the far end, behind the cukes and under the rows bush growing horizontally but of all the of all the what am I trying to say of all the squash to germinate this year the Waltham have germinated the best so I've got the most of them I thought well you know what give it a go and seeing as this year is a year for just being grateful for whatever I get you know if it doesn't work I'll be disappointed of course but on the other hand I haven't got any other squash to put here, so I might as well. Now last year the the Walthams didn't do brilliantly in terms of fruiting. Lots of lovely lots of lovely growth. Um, the occasional occasional fruits were appearing and dropping off and but mostly I just wasn't getting fruit. <clears throat> if it had just been me, I think I would have been a bit paranoid. But pretty much every, every garden I knew, both people responding to me on either my videos or my Facebook page, friends who are gardening friends outside of all that social media stuff, plus a number of the online groups I saw, it looked yeah, last year like across the board people really struggled with their walthams. And anyone who was having a success, it seemed, it seemed pretty fluky. You know, it's one of those things, it's, it's one of the great things about being part of the various groups or forums online is not that, not that we ever gloat in each other's miseries, we commiserate. And, and the thing is, if, if you're seeing that, if you're having a terrible year with something and you see, oh, actually, it looks like everyone's having a rubbish year, then it just helps you to not feel quite so bad and not quite question you know your confidence so much i speculated last year where's this one going 
um, I was chatting with Paul a bit about it from Richard and Paul because his war films were rubbish too. Uh, yeah, he won't mind me saying it's the truth. We all had rubbish war films. Is that perhaps the parent plants in 2018 when we had a really long drought? Um, perhaps a lot of our seed came from really stressed plants and that showed itself the following year in poor production. Don't know, just speculating. Okay, that's the three Walthams in. And then, as I was mentioning the other day, just on the very end of this bed here, where it butts up to the central path that everyone uses, I'm going to scratch a few calendula in. Yay! And hope they come to something. Well, that's, that's one bed done. Jack Belittle, Waltham Butternuts. Next is going to be the Yellow Scallops, the Random Delicata, the loofers and then in the vertical section over there horizontal I mean the cream of the crop once this bed's done I can then move back down that way towards the rose bush and start I'm not going to plant under the rose bush at the moment because I still haven't dug it or cleared the celery bed I've saved one of the celery for seed but I need to dig the remains of the rest out so I can pop a squash in there Hopefully I can get that all done today. I don't see why not if I don't stop to chatter too much. Right, on that note, come on Lily, chop chop. See you on the other side. Time to get on with the uh, horizontal squash now. Same principle as the vertical squash. In terms of space, feed and watering. The only difference is, I'll show you <laughs> how I water them. Um, I've just got this old cardboard down. This is stuff that the worms didn't eat last winter. A bit of a weed suppression. A bit of weed suppression, a bit of mulch in the absence of grass clippings, etc, etc, this year. So, the difference in terms of the watering, I'm still going to, oh, you see, it just shows how, how well this cardboard works as a mulch. This bed got soaked, what day is it today? It's now Thursday, when was the big push to finish the beds? It was last Friday, so it was about six days ago. I soaked this bed in order to be able to break up the the concrete <laughs> keep calling it concrete you know what i mean and uh wow it's still really moist down there so bottle again aiming for the roots get that in there the only difference in terms of this and in the vertical bed is these bottles will get a long stick in them oh, bits of old bamboo the stick is just my indicator of where to water. Obviously with the vertical squash, that foliage is hopefully going to be going all the way up the teepees, whereas with the horizontal squash, all the foliage will be scrambling around everywhere and eventually I won't be able to see my little watering pots. That's the plan anyway. <sighs> Fingers crossed. A bit of chicken poo, a ton of compost. Uh, I'm going to have, I'm actually being a bit greedy with space in this section too, because I'm going to try to get four. If I just had four, that would be about a square metre each, because my beds are about four metres long, and about a metre twenty to a metre fifty. However, I'm going to do these four on this edge and then where you are, right on that edge, two more. Two of hopefully what are going to be my biggies. One Rouge Vif de Tomp. That's the gorgeous Cinderella pumpkin. I've grown it before, but I haven't grown it for a couple of years. And I thought, oh yeah, I want to grow it again this year because it's so gorgeous. 
I'm so glad I planted those seeds because they've come up. Actually two came up in one pot. So I've looked at the two that have come up and the weaker one I've snipped, it's gone. So one Rouge Rift et Tombe and one of the Mousquet de Provence. I had two of those come up and they were both doing beautifully. Unfortunately, one got a nibbling. There we go. So these are looking beautifully big and healthy. I'm just trying to look at this theory about the direction in which they will go. Well, it looks like it wants to go towards you. So I'm gonna plant it to hopefully come into the bed. I haven't positioned this water bottle very well. I might reposition it because eventually what one hopes for is that the whole bed becomes so utterly covered in them they'll actually have to water from the paths, water from the sides with a big lean. Um, but yeah, it's in. It's in for now. The other thing I sometimes do with these horizontal ones, just to begin with, obviously there's the big stick for the water bottle. I sometimes put a little stick in to tie the plant to just for this first few days uh, because like I was saying with the cucumbers the stems are really susceptible we're quite windy at the moment the last thing I want is for it to be banging around and getting battered having said that though they've been sat in their little pots in the little trays out here for the last week or so in the wind so hopefully they're pretty strong <sighs> right let's get on with this and then see if I've got any energy left to do anything else this afternoon <sighs> last job of the day well it's not the last job last planting job I'm just gonna get all my celery in I've got space here for one two three four five six seven eight by four thirty two I've actually got spare plants so I'm thinking I might plant them under the squash teepees because they don't mind a bit of shade they're actually related to a bog plant so they do appreciate being kept really moist it's one of those things i'm sure i've said it before i've probably said it every year that i've grown them that if i've only got time to water one thing in the garden i make it the celery can you tell from the light how the afternoon has changed. My goodness, it has. Is that thunder? Oh no, it's an aeroplane. The clouds have become thicker and darker as each hour has gone by. And once again, I don't quite know how, but the afternoon has disappeared. <laughs> I think in that last video I was saying, oh, the squash will take me a couple of hours. It's taken me about four hours. But I think half of that is sort of going backwards and forwards to the shed for uh, bits and pieces. So when I say this is the last job, I mean it's the last planting job. Because what I could really do with doing this afternoon, apart from watering, <laughs> really good soaking for everything again um, I really need to have a bit of a tidy up and I don't mean that in a in a sort of an obsessive meat freak way <clears throat> purely that over the last few days I've just been concentrating so much on just you know get the beds finished get the bean poles up get plants in the ground <laughs> so up at the shed I've now got about oh getting off of 200 empty plant pots um, goodness knows how many gravel trays I'll take them all home over the course of the next few days and get everything washed washed dried put away and ready for next year <laughs> that's one thing it's also been the kind of days where I've just had everything out, scissors, trowel, my knife for cutting the, um, what do you call it, the cardboard. I've had my box out with all my cotton reels on to put cotton reels on the top of the uh, 
bamboo sort of watering sticks in the squash bed. I've had string out. I've, I've had my little metal rubbish bucket out. I've had the big red tug out. I've had chicken pellets out. Uh, you all know how it goes. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to make an effort this afternoon to have a bit of a tidy up before I go. I think I'm almost done with planting. Yeah, I've got the very last of the horizontal squash to do underneath the rose bush and the old celery bed. Need to dig it out. Then uh, it's just a case of putting the climbing beans out. And as I mentioned the other day, I'll probably leave at least another week just to let them get some roots going in those pots before I disturb them. Um, I want them to have big enough roots so that when I do disturb them by transplanting them, there's enough root there to sort of take that shock. A few bush beans to plug any gaps. But yeah, basically the planting and seeding is done. Where you are, garlic, that's one of the next jobs. Garlic out. Getting there. Getting there. Oh, one thing I am going to do, I'll wrap up in a sec. I know this is probably a, a long one again. Um, my NHS carrot bed hasn't worked. I think I've got one carrot germinated. So I'm going to start over. Oh, but loads of weeds. So I'm going to start over with that bed uh, because I have to have my carrots. And because I grow the Autumn King. I've still got plenty of time to sow, you know, they're an autumn and winter carrot, so it's not like I want carrots next week in the summer. It'll be fine. So yeah, get it weeded, re-sown. Bob's your uncle. Honestly, looking at the sky, you would truly believe it's about to pour with rain, which would be marvellous. We're not due any. <laughs> it's just dark and close. Ah, well look, I know this has been a long one, hasn't it? Um, but I hope you've enjoyed hanging out in the garden today, not being quite so hot. Yay! Uh, I hope that's given you some ideas for your squash planting as well. I know some of you do similar to me already, fab. Yeah, it's just always lovely to have you hanging out with me in the garden. You make the afternoon go beautifully quickly for me, so thank you for that. So on that note, I'm going to say cheerio. Next time you see me, ah yes, next time you see me, I will do a tour, show you where the whole garden at is, is at, at is, <laughs> I can't speak, where the whole garden is at, at the beginning-ish of June. What's the date? It's still only the, it's only the third or fourth today, so we're still early in the month. Yeah, that's what I'll do with you next, show you the whole garden. So until then, Please enjoy your green spaces, whatever the weather. Oh, uh, yeah, just enjoy yourselves, whatever you're up to. Take care, look after each other, give each other love, hugs, good vibes. And I will see you then. Bye for now.